Well, when I heard those words that you've got cancer, it was a moment when my stomach hit my rib cage and it was a jolting moment. But leading up to it, um, I, r I really didn't expect that and nobody expected it. I had a, a lump on my right breast, but I didn't think it was breast cancer. I noticed that there was a change in my breast, but it wasn't a pee type thing like I thought when you were examining your breasts, that's what you were looking for. It was actually a whole area that was different in texture. Probably is nothing, but you know, a little, a little bell said any change you notice, go and see your GP. So I kind of was on that merry-go-round there of thinking, oh, should I be worried, shouldn't I be worried? I found the lump myself around September 2006. And I sort of poked and prodded at it for a while and didn't really think much of it. I went and got it checked and they asked me, you know, was I worried about it? And of course I said no. And do you have any family history? No. So I just carried on my merry way and kept on having fun. And two years later, the lump got so large that I went and got it checked again. And um, of course it came back as breast cancer. She said, well, based on your ultrasound results, she said, I'm 99% sure you have invasive breast cancer. There's a tumour that looks like it's about three centimetres with satellite tumours around it. And, oh, and she said, and I said, so you're, you had to take that lump out? And she said, no, I'm going to recommend that you have a mastectomy. I lost it for a few seconds at that point. That, was, that came as a bit of a shock to think, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my entire breast. Um, and then she went on to say, and chemotherapy, possibly radiation therapy, and possibly five years of hormonal treatment. It was a shock. All those cliche words apply, shock, confusion, fear. The first thing I thought about was, I'm in serious trouble. When I was um, diagnosed, I, I was a single parent um, with three boys and um, I had lots of friends but I didn't have a lot of family help. My father had just died and my mother's um, in a nursing home. Everyone um, finds it a shock, I guess. I had a, a bit of nursing background, quite a bit, yet not really prepared for cancer from that. Um, I had a lot of ignorance. Completely out of the blue because I've been a very, tried to be a very healthy person, always exercising all my life. I felt a bit of guilt, and not shame, no, shame's not the right word. Um, I feel, I, yes, I, feel, I felt sad. I, I felt very sad that I was putting people I loved through stress, which maybe I wasn't feeling quite as much as they were. You go through this incredible guilt process where you do believe you've done this to yourself. And I thought, I've done this, you know, I've worked too hard, I've had too much stress, I've drunk too much, I've eaten too much, I've, you know, all these things. You start thinking, um, how did you do this to yourself? But you do seek to blame yourself. And, and so it took some time to get over that. You do kind of, I think, start to think start to distrust yourself and start to lose confidence in your body, this body that's let you down by having this bloody thing in it that you weren't aware of. And so the, the natural inclination, I think, for women is to do a bit of panicking about get it off, get it out. I just wanted the cancer out, gone, see you later. And actually um, me sort of thinking a bit more about it, having a chance to talk to other women, thinking about what was going to be important for me in my recovery um, and having that time that wasn't complete panic all the time is really important. For the first few weeks probably after my diagnosis, all, all that surrounded me was decision ma making decisions, um, what sort of treatment would I have, how would I know if it was right, what were the questions I needed to ask the doctor? What was I going to do about my kids? How was I going to tell my parents? All that sort of stuff. And, and was I going to live? 
And that's what took my waking moments. You just turn to jelly and you're so scared and so anxious. You've got all these questions you want to ask, but you forget when you get in there because it's, you know, it's your brain just, I don't know, goes to mashed potato or something. So the first thing is to have your questions written out. And the second thing is make, to take someone with you who can listen for you and really listen and take notes. It never occurred to me that I was going to die. I just didn't um, ever accept that. I expect it was there in my subconscious, but I wouldn't accept it. The most fundamental and important message is that it's not a death sentence. That for, it's really important to know the statistics and to know that uh, um, most women will survive and not only survive, but it'll be a blip in their lives. I've always considered myself a very fortunate person and um, I thought, well, yeah, things will actually go very smoothly, and which is mostly the case. I guess I expected it to be incredibly negative based on what I'd read and obviously just fears of, of cancer. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of positives about the journey as well. I had a great team of uh, medical professionals and I've met some great people and made some really good friends and I've had lots of support. I am very happy to get information from BCNA and it's the web, their website I go to first if I'm looking for information. You know, if you get onto the net and just Google a word, there's all sorts of goodies out there. But it's nice to know you can get reliable information from groups like BCNA. They're fantastic. One of the, the, the advice I would give to people was don't, would, don't be shy about telling people that you've been diagnosed with breast cancer. There's support out there and you will overcome any negativity. Be open to help. Be open to people assisting you with food, anything practical that you want to do but it's getting more difficult like picking up and dropping off the children, um, people having them for sleepovers more often. You've just, you've got to be more open to that but also I think you have to be a bit brave and even though you're going through a lot and put up your hand some weeks and say I can't do it today or I couldn't do it yesterday, can you help me? Definitely not, don't ever think that your life's over, never ever. Go out and find that positive, out of all that grimness and sadness, you do get through it and from that pull out what positives you can and there might be days where you don't see, there is no positive, everything is terrible and dreadful, and, but you do get through it. I used the resources that were provided to me and I read them cover to cover many times and then I gave them to my mum and she read them. Um, so, you know, from BCNA, um, from other organisations. You probably find you have a lot more inner strength than you ever, ever thought you had. And draw on that and don't be scared to ask for help from people and don't be scared to let friends love you and look after you. And more importantly, you look after yourself as well because you're the number one.